I keep it in my mind. I mean, I can never forget about it. It comes around all the time. I can't weed it out. All I can do is know that it happened. Just move on. Just move on. Football is definitely an escape. It's a feeling that I can't get from anything else. It brings me so much more than just a sport. You're just lost in the moment. Just a couple friends went out. Just an average night. When the night was over, we left and and that's when it wasn't an average night. There was miscommunication between me and two other kids. Just words at first, jokes, laughing. Probably within a minute, the other side approached with a manner that just wasn't comfortable. I felt like it was right to swing back or to fight back. Everything started speeding up, everything was going so fast, and I just left. I don't have any more knowledge of what happened. Pretty much lifeless. Um, just lifeless. I thought for sure he would wake up that day, you know, from the coma, and he didn't. It's something I would not want any parent to go through. It's, you know, I stood strong, and I can hold my faith, and I know he's in heaven, but I, it's just, cut, you might as well just cut your heart out, because it's, such uh, emptiness. Probably about two days after, um, I had a friend call me and told me that he heard news. When I heard it, I, I mean, I didn't really believe it. I guess like a dream I was trying to, trying to wake up from. Police were calling the boys and questioning the boys on what happened. He just knew something bad happened. I withdrew from school. I came home right away. At that point, I, I kind of realized that, all right, I think I'm, I'm gonna have to take responsibility for this. Initially, we were charged with two charges. There was murder two and involuntary manslaughter. Those both carry anywhere from zero to 15. Wasn't happy. It was a classic case of self-defense. Usually when you're picked on by somebody as the aggressor and you defend yourself, that's generally not cause for murder for any type of charge. I appreciate the forgiveness and the understanding that John's mother has showed to me. looking into his eyes, it was like looking into Jano's eyes. They had the same color of eyes. And it was, it took my breath away for a moment. I needed to forgive them. I knew out of all of the boys that Casey had heart. I could see the remorse on his face. You could see that he got it, that he he admitted it, he took responsibility, and that there was hope for Casey. I could see it. She told me that she doesn't blame me for, for what happened, and she wants the best for me. I just said, Casey, this is your second chance, and I need you to step it up and do what you need to do and make John and I proud. And he said he would.
I got sentenced to six months. We all agreed, let's, let's do this, get it over with, and go on with our life, you know? It's just real dark, it's like a cloud just over you, and you're just down the whole time. I always thought he lost a little part of his smile with that whole situation. Jail changed him, you know, he, uh, he went into jail as a boy and he came out a man. At first I felt like me as a person just kind of shut down. I don't feel like a part of me died, I feel like a part of me came alive. Football helped me a lot. It's something that I had to kind of cling on. I decided to go to junior college again. I got out and I just, I just committed to it and said, well, not a lot of people get this opportunity two times, so I'm gonna make the best of it. This is what I needed, this is my fresh start. He was incredible, you know, we led the nation in scoring his, uh, his year here. Um, we put up some unbelievable numbers. Scored 77 points in one game. He was dynamic, but more than just being a football player. We used him as an example for overcoming challenges and uh, you know, showing gratitude towards those who have helped you be successful. Coming to the end of the season, I knew I was good enough to go on and play somewhere else. It was just a matter of if someone wanted me to. Well, he was a tough sell. There was a lot of Division I-A schools that saw his film and called right away. They said, Coach, can't touch him. We don't want to face the public scrutiny. It was basically the only thing they asked about. It was, what happened that night? All right, that's good to know. We'll give you a call back, and that'd pretty much be the end of it. We had hopes, but then everybody started turning them down. I, I seen him kind of given up his dream. It actually came to a point where I just stopped telling my parents that I talked to this school, I talked to these coaches because it would just result in nothing coming of it. I didn't tell anybody that I had talked to Jackson State. It was getting to be June now. It was really his only option. We read up on all the reports and it showed that he was a young man that uh, kind of was in a situation of where at the wrong place at the wrong time. We felt that this young man needed an opportunity. I didn't know a whole lot about Jackson State. I didn't even know they were historically a black college. It was pretty shocking because I, I had never seen any white quarterbacks before in a historical black university. And it was going to be my first time ever having a white quarterback, so yeah, I was surprised. It can either go two ways. Either can, he can be real successful and everyone love him, or if we had a bad season, it only could get worse. I really don't care if they're blue, green, um, or what color they are. He was the best quarterback that we could get. We were proud to get him. Uh, color never entered into the fact that once I got here, I had all the opportunity in the world. I had free reign to be an athlete, to be a student. My teammates embraced everything I brought to the table. He had that leadership quality about him. They basically gave him the keys to the offense. He has a couple nicknames. They call him the White Tiger, the Blue-Eyed Soul Child. The fans and the people in Jackson know me by that now, so it's something that, that I kind of just took on and embraced. I, mean, I haven't even been here for a year, and I'm so much more accepted in the time that I've been here as a person, as a student, as an athlete, than I am back at home, and I've been there for 21 years. He could have just fallen and stayed down, but he didn't. 
through Jano's death, it's bringing a new life for Casey. He's exceeded what I wanted. I wanted him to do well in school, do well on the field, and do something powerful with his life. Make a difference. It's Casey living Jano's dream. Maybe for me, I'm not sure. Maybe for John. I think every lesson I've learned, I can apply it to the situation I've been through. There's just nothing that's gonna stop me, nothing that's gonna scare me to get to where I wanna go.